Betul Doan Akash, live from Ankara. She's an assistant professor of international relations at Ankara University. Professor, good to have you here with us on TRT World. Certainly, negotiations are still underway uh, to renew the truce deal in the wake of the latest developments, especially in the wake of latest developments that have taken place since 5 GMT today. How likely do you think is it for Israel and Hamas to renew their truce deal? Um... I mean, obviously, there's, again, an unproportionate amount of military intervention in Gaza, as we see in the previous talks by the um, uh, by the reporters. There are more than 100 Palestinians already killed by more than 200 airstrikes in Gaza. So the expectation is actually bring back the public opinion and international pressure on Israel to keep a truce once again running. And what we know more about it is Egypt and Qatar are involved once again to keep a certain amount of negotiation between parties, because what we know, we know that there are more hostages on the hands of um, Palestinian resistant groups in Gaza, not only in, by Hamas, but other groups also, they are holding hostages. So the primary purpose here to have another sort of truce, to have more hostages out of Gaza, and this is the priority of Israel because of the public opinion and pressure there. So. Um, the the most important motivation for the side of Israelis is the hostages. And the second one is the public opinion in the global and domestic level. People were kind of felt relieved once we had rules in seven, eight days. So the requirement of peace in Israel and Gaza, they're not, of course, in the same level, but Israelis are also calling for a certain amount of peace. So this is why I believe um, the negotiation issues are there. And what we know is that Turkish President uh, Recep Tayyip Erdogan will be also visiting Qatar this week. So he might be part of, again, the, um, the circle of negotiations with Egypt and Qatar. Professor, you mentioned uh, the Turkish uh, president there today. We saw the Turkish president speak about the humanitarian situation in Gaza at the COP28 summit. And over the past uh, seven weeks or so, President Erdogan has been raising uh, the issue of Palestine uh, and uh, Israel. At every international forum, he is highlighting the plight of uh, the innocent people of uh, Gaza. What do you think uh, this tells us about uh, Turkey's role when it comes to de-escalating tensions in the region? So, um, although we have more actors in the Middle East, as we all know, uh, Saudi Arabia, United Arab Emirates, uh, Kuwait, they are long-standing actors involved with this problem. Uh, but since the early days of, um, I mean, Turkish, uh, I mean, contemporary history, Turkey is involved with it. Uh, and especially in last, like this stage of war, as you mentioned, we have seen uh, the prime minister, and I mean, president and foreign minister involved more in the global level. Uh, this is how they actually behave in their foreign policy making when it comes to Palestine. But this time, the problem is we had states in Middle East, they have normalized relations with Israel. So the public opinion, the societal resistance in Arab world is also divided. So once uh, Pr President Erdogan talks about um, Israel or Palestine in support of civilians and in support of a ceasefire, this actually means more because we have a divided public opinion in the Middle East. We have public who support a ceasefire, who support a sus sustainable peace, but we have leaders who actually would like to go through a, a negotiation of um, reviewing economic relations with Israel rather than keeping Palestinian problem at the center of their political agenda. So this is why uh, I, I believe he will be traveling to Qatar to, to engage more on this negotiation process. Turkey uh, has, um, of course, a um, role in it before as well. But this time, because of the high number of hostages, Qatari side is also uh, involved uh, because they are the one who is able to talk with both of the parties. And they are the one who can secure a certain amount of sponsorship on behalf of Hamas and Israeli parties involved. So this is why I believe Turkey might be supportive in their response. Um, and because also in terms of inter 
international in terms of humanitarian aid to Gaza, uh, Turkey and the uh, some companies and NGOs from Turkey have been there before, and especially in terms of transfer, I mean, um, transition of um, humanitarian aid from international actors. To Turkey and from Turkey to Middle East or from Qatar to uh, to Gaza, uh, I believe his role and his narrative is important. Indeed, uh, and just to pick up on the aid part that he just mentioned, Turkey dispatched another aid ship uh, for the besieged uh, Gaza Strip uh, a few days ago. So certainly, Turkey appears to be doing whatever it can when it comes to alleviating the pain and sufferings of the people of uh, Palestine. Now, let's talk about uh, diplomacy. So the countries uh, which are actively engaged in uh, reaching a truce deal right now are Qatar, Egypt, and the United States. They played a critical role <clears throat> in uh, securing the truce deal that was in place up until 5 uh, GMT today and certainly talks are still underway among uh, same stakeholders. How likely do you think is it uh, for them to secure an other deal given the fact that uh, Netanyahu has pledged to continue the war until, as he says, Hamas is removed? So uh, the Palestinian problem, or as you call it, the conflict uh, between Israeli and Palestinian parties, because naming means a lot about how do you approach the, the, the current war, is a long-standing and international problem. Although we mainly mention about Palestinian people as who are suffering more from this uh, occupation and military intervention, this is an international war because we have Palestinians everywhere in the world. They are running different positions in the governments, in Middle East, in civil societies, in universities. They are medical doctors, engineers. So this is what's happening in Gaza is not keeping the limits of being Palestinian in Gaza. We have people all around the world with different nationalities, either Palestinians or half Palestinian, half different nationality. They watch the situation from TV. This is a new sort of war where we watch human suffering on social media, on television. This is very first time we actually watch a genocide. And what about all these Palestinians? How they are gonna um, bring their stories back to international, uh, I mean, public opinion. So this is why, although we have a U.S. less supportive in terms of civilian casualties in Palestine, we also know that there are NGOs and lobbies, they actually don't support the U.S. position in the current war. So um, because it's an internationally watched uh, war at the moment, because we have Palestinians all around the world in different positions, and they are experienced with their situation, because it's a long-standing situation. I believe we have more um, people working on the, uh, for, for, for calling international, uh, international support. In terms of U.S., because we know they are basically playing for the domestic elections, we are not expecting more. But what we could expect, because the public opinion calls for a ceasefire, and people actually saw this is possible once you exchange hostages. So I believe there will be more um, with with uh, with a, maybe a slightly change in U.S. policymaking. I am not very optimistic when it comes to American policies towards Palestine, but at least we know it worked once and it might be working for another stage of um, ceasefire. At least uh, on in public, the U.S. Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, has stated that he wants to see a prolonged ceasefire, but uh, we don't know whether or not that is the case when it comes to backdoor Diplomacy. Pro Professor Betul, thank you very much for talking to us here on TRT World. Really appreciate your taking out the time.